Samuel, the, the program is all yours. Okay, great. Thank you. Good afternoon. So, uh, thanks for inviting me, John, uh, to share our experiences in terms of um, our partnership with SQI. Um, the, the presentation is titled Successes and Challenges in Driving a Service Culture, um, the GCB Bank Experience. I will do a quick overview of Ghana, where Ghana is positioned among the, all the African countries, because we have about 52 countries in Africa. Uh, a quick overview of GCB Bank, also talking about the banking sector in, in Ghana. And then the next one, talk about customer preferences. And this was based upon a survey that was done by PricewaterCoopers in 2015 in terms of what customers really want. And then go into GCB customer service issues, the start of the journey, what we've done, the strategy to solve the issues, uh, partnership with quality, service quality, uh, improvement our partnership with SQI, and the challenges, and then talk briefly about the financial impact uh, since we started the journey. So this is basically the map of Africa. And Ghana is located in West Africa. As you can see, Ghana, uh, Africa is made up of so many, many countries. Uh, once in a while, occasionally you hear people talk about Africa as it's just one country. In, in fact, to, to fly from Ghana to South Africa is almost a close to about five hours, six hours flight. Um, so that's where Ghana is located. Um, everyone knows about Nigeria, which is over here. So yes, we have some Nigerians here, brothers here as well. And this is where Ghana is located. We're English speaking, and Ghana is actually surrounded by French speaking countries. Um, that's how the co colonies left us, right? So population about 26 million, official language English. English is spoken right from beginning and schooling is done in English. Um, GDP about 42 billion USD. Uh, this is a 2015 estimate. Ghana actually dis has discovered oil. Uh, we are now an oil producer, of course, not in the quantities as other countries, but more of the oil fields are being developed and as they come on stream, Ghana's economy is hopefully, uh, if oil prices go up, at least there will be greater income and economic development. Our key exports, Gold, cocoa, timber, bauxite, magazine, uh, manganese, and oil. Uh, Ghana is the second largest producer of cocoa for chocolate in the world, uh, next to, second to Ivory Coast, which is located, or Cote d'Ivoire, which is located next door. So this is Cote d'Ivoire, and we are second in terms of cocoa. Key industries, the services industry and services sector leading contributors to GDP uh, with 7%. Uh, in industry GDP growth and 6% in the services sector uh, as of Q1 2016. In terms of the currency, we use the CD exchange rate approximately uh, four CDs to one dollar. Uh, the currency has been depreciating over a period of time. I tell my friends that I, had, I lived in Canada many years, moved to Ghana. When I moved to Ghana in 2008, it was one to one, uh, but we stand at almost four now. So. My pay hasn't gone up significantly, but you know, so my purchase, purchasing power has gone down. Overview of GCB, uh, established in 1953 as the Bank of the Gold Coast. That was prior to Ghana getting independence. Ghana got independence in 1957. So prior to that, we were ruled by the British, and uh, basically the Bank of Gold Coast was established. Ghana's before the name of the country was changed to, at independence to Ghana, we were called the Gold Coast because Ghana was a large producer of gold, really. So we're known as the Gold Coast. And GCB, or Ghana Commercial Bank, was the central bank then when it was first established. In 1957, it was renamed Ghana Commercial Bank to focus on commercial banking services, primarily to serve the indigenous businesses. Uh, prior to that, we had Barclays and Stanchard in Ghana, but of course, they did not focus on the domestic businesses. So that was one of the impetuses for establishing Ghana Commercial Bank. In 1996, um, 
we listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Shareholding, the government of Ghana owns about 21%. The government pension, pension fund, which is SNIP, owns 30%. So between the government itself, through the Ministry of Finance, and the government pension fund, we have about 51% majority shareholding. So we consider the bank primarily as a joint venture between the government and the private sector. Institutional and individual um, individuals own about 49%, and we are listed on the stock exchange. However, the government still calls the shots in, mo in most cases, primarily because most of our investors, who, which are mutual funds or fund managers from London, New York, um, South Africa, Nairobi, Kenya, when they come visiting uh, in terms of buying the stock, they are not actively participating in terms of decision making. They are just interested in the performance of the bank in terms of buying the stock. So every month or every quarter, I get investors from all over New York, London, um, South Africa, as I said, uh, from Kenya, visiting the company, basically talking to management about our strategies, going to the financial statement in terms of how we're doing. So that's the, the situation of Ghana Commercial Bank. Now, in 2014, we did a rebranding, and basically we changed the name from Ghana Commercial Bank to GCB Bank Limited. We are the second largest in terms of asset base in Ghana, about five, five billion in uh, Ghana cities, which translates approximately to about 2.7 um, billion in terms of um, uh, um, US dollars in terms of asset. Our market share of deposits is about 9%, and we, but however, we have the largest customer base because we've been in existence for a long time. We have about close to about 2.5 million. And our staff strength, about 2,300. Widest network branch in Ghana, 160 branch and 15 agencies located throughout the country. So from the southern part where the, the capital is to the north, very remote places, we have branches. So that gives you an idea in terms of some of the challenges that we go through in terms of basically providing services to our customers. That's the headquarters, the building of the headquarters in Accra. Uh, this building was put up many years ago uh, when the bank was established, I think 1960 or so. It's still in good shape, we renovated it. And the, the main high street branch, we call it, this is a branch attached to the headquarters. So we are located somewhere here. My office is somewhere right there on the, on the, on the eighth floor, somewhere there. In terms of the banking industry in Ghana. Very, very dynamic. We have over 30, close to about 32 banks licensed at the moment. A number of savings and loans and a, number, a large number of microfinance companies. So as part of the financial services reform uh, many years ago, uh, the bank of central bank basically opened it up for a number of banks to come in. So we have a number of foreign banks that have come in into Ghana from Nigeria, from South Africa, uh, having basically uh, competing open branches in Ghana now and competing. So, and it has made tremendous difference in terms of the services that we offer. The entrance of the foreign banks basically caught Ghana Commercial Bank or GCB Bank, my bank then, basically sleeping because GCB Bank, Barclays, and Stanchard were the, the three banks that really controlled the market until we got a flood of uh, banks from Nigeria. And that really began the service revolution in terms of changing the service culture in Ghana. In terms of industry assets, about 61 billion Ghana cities. As I said, if you divide by four, you get the US dollar equivalent. Loans, about 30 billion. Deposits, about 41 billion. Now, in terms of all the banks, uh, we classify them in terms of operating assets into four quartiles. The first quartile is what we consider as our, our, our primary competitors. So we have EcoBank, which is a Pan-Africa bank, uh, currently in 31 countries in Africa. So it, it's based in Togo. Togo is next to Ghana. We have GCB Bank, that's my bank, Stanbic Bank from South Africa. We have Stanchard, of course, from UK, Zenith Bank in Nigeria, Fidelity Bank is a local bank in Ghana, 
and Barclays Bank. So these are our primary competitors. We have other banks, but they are in the second, third, or fourth tier. In terms of new developments, new products and services, mobile banking is hot at the moment. Mobile money transfers, internet banking, cards, and a variety of payment solutions, all geared to provide convenience for the customer. So every day, almost every month, another bank comes with a new product. So there's a huge competition, but obviously the service is always a challenge in, in Ghana in terms of the service. And although we are putting our products, what are we doing in terms of the service? So let's go back to what the customers want. In every service delivery, we have to ask the customers, what do they really want? And in last year, PwC did a survey and asked customers as to what they want to see their banks offer by 2020. By 2020, what are the most important things that the customers in Ghana want from their banks? And the red bar basically is the first, uh, the ranking, the, the, the service thing that they want as number one. And then the, yeah, the blue bar is number one and two combined. So obviously security in banking is key. Key, key, key because of the fraud and globally uh, people are concerned in terms of fraud. So making sure that their funds are secured is key for customers. Then we have convenience and convenience obviously everybody knows that I want to be able to do my banking services. As I sit here, I can do my banking in, in Ghana. I can use my, my card services. I can go online on the web and still access my banking services and to be able to do my transfers between accounts and all that. So convenience is key. Speed, speed and service is, is next. Then simplicity, affordability, product variety, credit availability and familiarity. So these are themes that basically in all the programs, the service culture programs that we've talked about or SQI offers, basically we address all these things. So it's still relevant. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that this is 2015 survey and all the things that basically our customers want is, is indicated. Of course, when they interviewed bank executives about the same thing, what they want to see are important. Of course, bank executives in terms of offering, technology is key, competition, and then legislation. Because in the banking area, I mean, we are inundated with Regulations, regulations, regulations. And so banks are spending a lot of money in terms of compliance, making sure that our processes, our systems, our policies are compliant with international standards, anti-AML, knowing your customer. These are key regulations that our banks are facing at the moment. So with, with what the customer wants in mind, let's go back to what the issues were in GCB. Going back to the start of the journey in 2015, this is a survey that was done by our customers and our staff in terms of the barriers to providing good service to our customers. So our staff basically were telling us exactly what were the issues that we needed to basically deal with in order to be able to provide good service to our customers. Service strategy and standards, no clear policy on service objectives and standards, customer value, not communicated clearly to the uh, staff, so they were not really sure as to what they were dealing with. We all knew we had to do something, but it wasn't clear, no clear policy was articulated to guide the process. Products and services, limited features on some of our products, fixed deposits, our customers wanted it, and our, our offering wasn't, wasn't adequate. We have lack of customer lack of some customer desired products. For example, we did not offer overdrafts on, on our checking accounts, for example. We did not offer it because our credit systems, our credit bureaus are just beginning to develop in Ghana. So as a, a bank executive, and my, I also have a risk background, I'm always wary in terms of offering credit without proper assessment. So our, our products are, in terms of credit offering, it's a little bit limited, 
but we have, because we have to be very careful, uh, we don't put the poisonous money at risk. I'm going back. People, 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 people. I mean, that is our major issue. Our major issue. I talked to you about the bank was established in 1953, government owned, and we, we, were, we had less competition then. If you got into the bank, Ghana Commercial Bank or GCB Bank then, basically you were privileged then. So just, just look at, uh, in your mind, uh, imagine the environment. If you got into GCB, you were privileged. So of course, uh, you had somebody asked about turnover. Literally, nobody left the bank, really. I mean, nobody left. The turnover rate was low. Occasionally, you, in a year, you get about two or three people leave unless they are retiring. So we basically, our staff attitude was an issue. Inadequate frontline staff in branches. So this was from management, basically, in terms of we did not provide the, the branches with adequate staffing levels. And of course, the branch managers were also not doing their bit in terms of how, how they distributed the, 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 the staff in terms of the, the service counters. We had a lot of older staff who were officers or seniors. And of course, they didn't want to come to the service counters. So you see a long lineup, and you have officers sitting at the back, but instead of them coming to the front. So those were major issues that we needed to do. Staff felt un unmotivated, contract staff. We are using a lot of contract staff, and they were paid less than the permanent staff. But they did some of, most of the job as well. Lack of empowerment of frontline staff to make decisions. Lack of cooperation among staff. So occasionally, uh, we're networked. So if a customer goes to a branch other than their home branch, and you want to authenticate information, but the customer occasionally you may have to call another branch. And the cooperation was not there. You may not get faster reaction to or deal, uh, the other branch dealing uh, promptly with your, your request. So that was an, an issue. Product knowledge was also an issue. And staff not recognized for outstanding work and behavior. Our processes, basically process failures, long wait for, let's say, debit cards, if you order debit cards, they were produced centrally. And in terms of tracking and making sure they get the branches, got them in time, those were issues. Uh, requisition of branch logistics was long. Um, they would, uh, branches would normally send a request to head office, and in terms of basically the acquisition and provision of the tools that they needed to provide the service to customer was also a challenge. Too many forms to be filled out by customers. I mean, recently we've done we consolidated the account opening, and so you can request, open an account and request for all the checkbook, your, your card, and anything that else that you needed, your internet banking, all by completing one form. But prior to some of the changes, you had to have different forms for different uh, services that you required. Customer communication wasn't clear. Um, no standardized process across service outlets and lower transaction limits for tellers. A teller, for example, I think had about 1,500 to, to basically a limit in terms of providing services. So if he came for a withdrawal greater than that, then you have to get a, a supervisor to come and override. So we we'll looked at those limits and changed them appropriately so that we can offer the service. Our systems, we had challenges with frequent downtimes. Uh, connectivity in Ghana was a challenge, uh, internet connectivity. We, we spent a lot of money in terms of using satellite, you don't have fiber optics and all that, but satellite and radio in terms of, of getting connectivity across all the service outlets. And as I indicated, we have branches in remote areas. So that was also a, a challenge. But our systems in terms of our data center was not up to, uh, basically was not able to handle the number of transactions that we process. So we had occasional free, uh, system downtimes. Uh, uh, ATM debit uh, without dispensing, I'm sure, I don't know, because of the timing out, occasionally you would put your card into the ATM and the money wouldn't come out because there was a break in the communication. So those are some of the challenges that we had. Um, Note counting machines, they complained, they had older computers and all that. And then a physical infrastructure. 
I'll show you uh, pictures of our, some of our branches. They were not the best branches in terms of appeal, uh, but we've, since, since the rebranding, we have new branch designs and basically making a difference in terms of how our branches look. Now, in terms of solving this issue, I mean, you can, service is a number of, has a number of components. You, could, you can't just have a product or you go through a service culture plan when the other components are not there. So I call those enablers. So we have to look at it holistically. We were also doing some branding in terms of the change, uh, transformation of the bank, touching all aspects of the, of the bank. Our uh, physical structures, our uh, HR, our uh, IT systems, our uh, people, so our uh, processes. So we embarked on the complete transformation of the bank, looking at all aspects, and we're flying in all gears with a lot of projects at the same time. But we've made a lot of uh, progress. Now, during the rebranding, basically our brand promise was that we wanted to become Africa's most welcoming bank and one of the preferred financial services brands in Africa. I mean, that's what basically uh, we're looking at. Now, in order to do that, basically you have to have your products and services, and as a result of that good product that meets our customer needs, then what do you have to do? Of course, we had to do segmentation of our customers to develop the appropriate products for them in all these areas. So that was one area. Of course, we did the rebranding, which was the name of the, of the change of name of the company, the name, logo, colors, uh, basically changes in terms of the uh, vision, mission, values, and all those had to be translated into practical things for our, our staff. Then on go corporate governance, we did a lot of work as well in terms of our policies, our risk management policies and all that. Everything had to be put in place. And so we needed to enhance our corporate governance. That goes into it. Then, of course, quality service. And service, we have your people, processes, systems, and, and channels. So as, as a result of that, we, we embarked on the HR transformation, streamlining our operations, upgrading our IT infrastructure, our branch network, and alternate channels. So in order to really get to where we, are, we want to be, yeah, we have to touch so many areas. So that's the kind of... Uh, environment that we've been working of in over the last five years, really working in all areas. And I used to manage operations, and in order to get the transformation going, I basically was moved into to become the chief transformation officer to provide executive leadership in terms of the, the whole transformation program. And I've just come back into operations with um, taking some of the responsibilities of the transformation as well as operations. Now, our partnership with SQI. So as I indicated, 2012, basically, we entered into a partnership, a three-year, uh, to run the three-year service culture program. Of course, there's a, a local partner, Rohu, here, basically, for SQI, uh, who introduced the program to us. We went through a number of back and forth until I got my colleagues to buy in to in order to, for us to embark on that program. Of course, we started the program in March 2013, and of course, we've gone through all the, the various modules. It's very, very exciting, and it's provided a lot of uh, basically tools and skills and changes in terms of our employee behavior but there's still more work to be done. To be honest with you, as John indicated, we need to go back and, and, and redo it again. Because since that time, a lot of staff have moved, and I'll talk about that. So we need to go back and retouch on all this thing again. Of course, it involved, in terms of approach, we had the trainer, train the trainer concept, in which we needed to train the trainers, and we had almost over 200 locations so we have 160 branches, so that was every location, and the head office, all the various departments. In fact, on the, on the executive floor, basically we have, in the head office, we have about eight floors, and we're on the eighth floor. So on the days that we had to take the program, we had about five executives and our PAs and our messengers, and of course, 
uh, our PAs sitting around a table and going through the same program with a, a facilitator showing the videos. We had the workbooks and all that. So in terms of approach, we didn't separate the executives from the staff, as I indicated. For, for us, we're with our PAs and our messengers basically going through the same program and sharing ideas. So that was interesting. Um, just a few pictures. This is one of the, when John first launched the, the program. Uh, we, had, we did it on a Saturday. So we had a big hall. And there was John uh, basically doing it. And this is Rahul's uh, mom or partner, <laughs> if I may call it. <laughs> basically training with our service manager, Munuhur, who is a customer service manager who is also here in one of the programs. And these are small groups. And I think this is even a risk management department in their small groups basically going through the program. So that's what we went through. Now, service quality, there's a lot of slide, but I'm just going to cut it. Basically, as I indicated, we had to do our service standards as part of the program. So we are looking at service turnaround time. The rebranding basically provided what we call the, the values and tone of voice. And I'll show you how we, we use it in our, our program. And then we've developed new staff behavior and courtesies. We've developed that, which we are rolling out. Now, in terms of the process improvement area, mapping of front and back office processes, standardization of way of offering services, some of this is still in work in progress. So we are not there yet at all. I mean, we are still started, as I indicated, even the mapping of the processes, we've just finished the front end. Uh, which is being reviewed, and now the back office processes are going to be, be done. Then of our, our systems, basically we build a new data center. Uh, we've done an upgrade of our core banking application, our IT infrastructure. We've done a lot of upgrade. We've refreshed computers across the organization and all that. So there's a, work, a lot of work that has been done. Channels and products, our branch refurbishments. I'll show you a, a new branch. Basically, we, as part of the rebranding, we developed a new branch concept, what a new branch, GCB branch, is going to look like. And we've just begun implementing those in terms of, imagine us, we need to renovate 160 locations. And this, we have about a six-year program in terms of doing that. Even that is a bit of a challenge. Money is not an issue because we are still profitable and we are reinvesting. We are not going to our shareholders for money. So I think we are going to do that. Of course, we have our internet banking services, our ATMs. And we had 110 ATMs. We've increased the ATMs to 256. The primary reason is that we embarked on a strategy called decongesting the branches. We wanted to move people from the branches to convenience channels. People came in the branch just to check their balances, to withdraw money, and they were taking space. So this was an offering. We made transactions free on the ATMs, so you can do your withdrawals. And we've actually started charging. If you go in branch to take an amount up to, I think, 800 CDs or so, we, we now charge you about two, two, two to four, five CDs. But occasionally, you still have people still going to the branch. I mean, trying to basically change behavior. Once we free our branches, then at least I can bring in the high net worth customers. Because today, you go in and my branches are busy. And, and so I, don't, I can't get attract people like you going to my branches. So that is a, a strategy that we've adopted. So we're increasing our ATMs. And, and in fact, this year, we've also, we are going to be adding another 30 ATMs across the network. The branding, this is what we call GCB Brand Star. So it basically talks about our brand position, our promise, our vision, our mission, our values. And our values, we use the acronym STARS. Our service, which is service, trust, action, relationship, and smiles. And our tone of voice, how do we communicate, both in word, print, and basically, it's called fresh. So friendly, relevant, energetic, supportive, and honest. So we basically went through this. These, this is basically what we call our brand stars. And all the actions and services that we provide must go back to, to this, one of these. And we've tried, as I, in terms of simplifying communication, as I said, our values basically is STARS. That's the acronym, Service, Trust, Action, Relationships, and Smiles. And the tone of voice is FRESH, which is basically friendly, relevant, energetic support. So 
basically looking at the promise, Africa's most work, I've just taken a few words from them, the words in the promise and what they mean. Africa's most welcoming bank means we are friendly and approachable. Accessible financial support, we are convenient and easy to access. Wherever it's needed, the strength and reach to deliver locally and, and beyond. Helpful service, knowledgeable and understanding, sorry, I missed the word here. Expert solutions, offer market leading products services and, and technology, and then we want to encourage business support and promote entrepreneurship and enrich people's lives. Everything we do is to benefit our customers. So in terms of where we want to go, the customer is front and center, but these are words. We need to be really be able to deliver on them. But at least from a strategy perspective, I think we are there in terms of understanding the various dynamics. It's basically where we are is ensuring that we can deliver on what we want to get to. This is a lot of stuff, but I just want to show you one line in terms of what this means. So we are looking at our service standards and behaviors, and this is based upon the tone of voice, which I indicate is fresh, and the value stars. So I take, let's say, the tone of voice, friendly, fresh. In, in the branch, what are the the things that we want to see in the branch when they say friendly. So you have to meet and greet and smile. Establish the need. Check, our customers, check for customer satisfaction. Thank the customer for doing business with GCP. So these are things that we want to see, the behaviors that we want to see for the branch. Now, when we go to the back office, right, and how are we going to measure them? Through mystery shopping, peer, peer reviews, Question, questions, customer service. This is how we want to measure them. Then we go to non-branch head office locations. Meet and greet and smile. Even head office, as we walk around, meet our colleagues, are we even saying hello, Munuri, and with a smile. We, we, are, we don't do that. We want to be able to do that. Offer help. We are basically, as you know, I mean, any issue that we deal with in most organizations is multi-departmental. So, you need to be able to deal with other departments and other units. And basically, we have to be able to be able to offer help and apply the 10-foot rule. So how do we measure that peer review and the service audit? That's what we want to do for our non-branch location. Then we have our relationship managers. And our corporate banking, these are people who deal with, staff who deal with uh, corporations. Now, we also have what does it mean to be friendly? They have to schedule an appointment uh, a day or two ahead of a visit. Basically, arrive at least 10 minutes before time. Provide enough information for interaction and all that. So these are the, the expectations that we require from our relationship managers. And there's a way to measure it. So we've put all these things, and now we need to really roll this out. I mean, this is... Basically, we map this, we are in the process of about to roll. And that would involve training and then measuring it. Measurement, measurement, measurement. So we've done a lot of this work, but as I indicated, we are here to roll it out, and that's what we're going to do. So we've used a fresh and now response, uh, responsive, relevant readiness. We have the actions that are required and how we measure it, energetic and all that. We go into our stars, also the service trust, action, relationships, for example. So when it comes to service, S, effective interaction with the customers, exhibiting good product knowledge, because you can't interact with a customer without knowing that product knowledge. And then we are going to measure that. Mystery shopping, service, peer review. And non-head office, non-branch or head office location, these are the actions that are required. You go to the relationship managers, these are the actions that are required and how we measure it. So we have all these things mapped out. Now, where we are is basically implementing them. I told you about our, our infrastructure. So this is how our data center look like, with servers all over the place. And this is how they monitor, the guys monitor. Now, this is our new data center, state of the art. And this is the monitoring room, just to show you the kinds of investments that we've done. Because without a good data center, we can provide the communication and core banking support for our branches in order to be able to serve our customers. 
we looked at our branches. These are one of our branches, old looking. We've actually demolished that. And that was how busy and dark, you know, because Ghana had all the timber, the ceiling was then, in those days, I think, uh, the, the ceiling was all made of wood, and it's dark wood. So the environment is not bright and all that. But I remember, I think in those days, 40 years ago, it, wa it was a hot, uh, good-looking building, a branch. This is our new branch design. This is the frontage. You come through here. There's a self-service channels, and then you can go in there. Within the branch, the branch is divided in two. We have the whole banking, we call it, and that's where the mass, pe mass market uh, customers do go in and meet with the tellers to do the transaction. And behind this, this is kind of the meter greeter position. These are our personal bankers. And then in there is what we call the, the lounge banking. So you go there, there's seating, comfortable seating, there's a screen, there's coffee and all that. And that is meant for high, high net worth uh, customers. So, and they get personal attention. And as I said, they, we have what we call a bulk cash um, tele, uh, service counter in there, whereby when you have businesses with a lot of money, instead of being in a queue, you go to the back end and you go into the bulk cash teller. So this is the new look. I mean, we have about four done today. I have another six in progress. And imagine, I have to try and do this for 160 locations. As I said, a lot of investment. We may not do this approach for all the branches because not all of them are. So we are dividing our branches in tier one and tier two. Tier one is basically in the, in the major cities where the money is made. In fact, 70% of all the money is made in Accra, Kumasi, and Takradi, the three cities in southern Ghana. And, and the rural branches will just apply the look and feel of, of, of the environment, but at least you have a nice, friendly environment to walk in and to do your, your banking. I'm going to show you, we've also done our products and services. Uh, we've launched new products, and I just wanted to show you a video of our new, uh, one of the new products that we launched. Fill it up. Make payments instantly on GCB Light Pay with any Visa, Mastercard, GH Link, or GCB Ready Cash Card. Insert or swipe your card. Enter your PIN and you are done. No need for cash or wait for change. Pay with ease and stay in control. GCB Light Pay, no long things. Change? Oh, madam! Madam! Oh! Madam! Why lose valuable business? Receive payments instantly on GCB Light Pay with Anyvesa, Mastercard, GH Link, or GCB Ready Cash Card. You can pay with GCB Light Pay even in the remotest of places. No need for cash or waiting for change. Get paid with ease and stay in control. GCB Light Pay. No long things. So, as, so as I indicated, um, basically we, we, we have to introduce new products. Uh, the market is very, very competitive. For, for us to be relevant, we, we've actually uh, gone ahead to basically introduce our new products. I'm sure uh, most of you have seen this, uh, uh, basically, um, the we call them mobile point of sale terminals, which are used in many locations. So it works off your phone and a Bluetooth. So our objective is really to be able to complete the, uh, control the payments industry, and basically control payments. You can make payments everywhere. If you know Ghana and most of African countries, there's a lot of cash that is being used. So this is a new product that we've introduced just to move forward. Now, what are the some of the challenges that we've faced in terms of improving? Attitude of old staff. 
as I indicated, this is an, um, the average age is about 44 now because we've done some redundancies, but it used to be much higher. Uh, basically, we had a lot of old staff with uh, basically ne a lot of negative attitude and behaviors. Um, so we've done a lot of training, but we've done a lot of voluntary exits. So over the last four years, we did voluntary exits. And this year, we've done a compulsory exit, 197 people leaving. The package is so good that I have another 200 people who want to go. So it's a way to actually renew the organization. And we're looking forward in terms of basically paying these guys off so that we can bring in younger people, it provides opportunity to basically get them uh, trained and uh, inculcating the, uh, the good service uh, culture in them. So that's what we're doing. Um, challenges with system downtimes. Uh, GCB does a lot of transactions. As I indicated, um, in our ATMs alone, we have 130 million withdrawn in, in a month. 130 million CDs. So if you divide it by four, almost 40 million uh, dollars withdrawn from from um, our ATMs. So imagine the number of transactions. So it calls for a lot of data processing. Our switch is located in Mauritius. Uh, we partner with Mauritius Commercial Bank. So occasionally you get um, inst uh, instabilities in terms of downtimes. We have also had, Ghana has also experienced a lot of power issues uh, in the last couple of years. So that also impacts the cost of doing work uh, business. Processes not fully standardized. As I indicated, it's work in progress. We are mapping all our processes. Once the processes are mapped, then of course we are going to go in and re-engineer the processes and make them lean to cut out the, the waste and all that. So there's a lot of work that is being done. GCB server outlets not attractive. So I showed you the old branches. They were not. We are beginning the investments to make our, our branches very, very modern and attractive. Our performance um, service culture facilitators, as we indicated, we had some challenges in terms of the delivery of the program. But I think um, once we have an opportunity to go through again, I think we'll do a better job. Uh, leaders are at various levels not giving full support to the drive to service excellence. I mean, some of the previous uh, presenters, you get the commitment from the top. Yes, the, the top is already there. but. Uh, at the executive level, we are just nine. But the leaders, the supervisors in the various departments and branches in terms of getting their commitment in terms of driving the service culture is something that we need to work on because uh, it, we don't have it fully. So it's still work in progress and this is a, a huge challenge. Now let's look at the, um, the financial impact. Now of course, I wouldn't attribute everything to service, but it's, it's part of it. So since 2012, you can see our revenues have gone up from 418 million Ghana cities to 866 million Ghana cities. Uh, profit before tax increased from 192 to 360. Last year, we, this figure went down primarily because we had a, a, loan in, a, a major loan impairment which affected a number of the banks. So that's why uh, basically it went down. But other than that, it would have just gone up. Uh, total assets have been increasing, 2.9 billion to about 4.6 billion. And you can see the deposits increasing from 2.3 billion in 2012 to about 3.3 billion uh, in 2015. Uh, in terms of the loans and advances, our loan book was about 847 million. Ghana cities is about 1.5 uh, billion at the moment. Our cost to income ratio, which is key for us, really, we need to really be able to drive it slightly below 50%. Um, basically, it came to about 49%. This 2015 was due to uh, at, at 2010, we had a, a huge recovery. Uh, so that increased the, 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 what do you call it, the revenue. So, so that's why the cost to income ratio went down. But as you can see, it's, it's going down. And as we, we basically, work with our employees to renew the employee we're going to and bring in efficiencies that is key for for banks to really to be able to drive this in terms of total accounts you can see in 2016 uh, month by month i think we are in september we are around slightly about 2.4 uh 2.46 uh million in terms of number of accounts 
and our shareholder value, which is basically uh, driven by the share price as well, you can see that has gone up. So all in all, I mean, uh, implementation of a service culture is helping, and the whole transformation program is helping us improve our, our profitability and our performance, financial performance significantly. Our way forward, uh, as I indicated, we have to continue our investments in our staff training. Um, uh, we have to go back, and I've picked a lot, a, lot, a lot of ideas from our presentations earlier on the Oscars presentation last yesterday uh, that we have to begin to implement. We have to go back in terms of reorganizing, uh, having service champions, uh, customer service manager is here. We picked up, we discussed a few things that we need to go back and relook in terms of really bringing service us to the center. And that calls for a lot of discussion at the executive level in terms of the commitment to uh, service. Because once we get the, we put the customer at the center, then I think all the others will shall fall in place. So that's what we are looking at. But we had a lot of challenges in a number of areas. So we had to tackle so many things, as you've seen, our physical infrastructure, our IT systems, our HR people and all that. But I think we are at a, at a point where the bank is fairly stable in terms of some of the things that we needed to operate so that we can then relook at the service again and, and, and put it back at the center of everything that we do. Um, we've actually just piloting a new performance management system called, based upon the balance scorecard this year. Next year, we formally roll this out. Um, so that would really uh, prov uh, provide the opportunity to measure performance on customers or of staff. And as, as you know, the balance scorecard, one of the components is customer service. And so that will be measured. We need to improve the customer service measurement. So in terms of mystery shopping and SLAs between departments, uh, basically, we are working on that at the moment in terms of uh, developing standard measurements for customer service, peer-to-peer -peer evaluation, our mystery shopping, so that we have a standard scorecard. But in terms of the, the scorecard definition um, for staff, we've agreed on certain basic uh, KPIs that, we, uh, that has to go in and every uh, employee has to meet. But we have to make sure that we have the objective way of measuring it so that that can be part of it scorecard. Um, customer service KPIs and employees have I spoke to you. Now we're developing a customer service index for the bank to be included in the bank overall scorecard. Um, I, I worked in CIBC in Canada for many years and um, we had a, um, a KPI for customer service. And if it fell below a certain level, nobody got a bonus. So definitely that's what I've been talking to my, my team about and my colleagues about. So we've actually, working with a consultant, developed the components of coming up with a customer service index, which basically with all the inputs from mystery shopping and all that, every quarter we have an index that will measure our customer performance, customer service performance across the, for the whole bank on a quarterly basis. And ultimately we have to put it in a, the bank scorecard that if we fall below, let's say 70% or 80%, for example, no bonuses are paid. And I think that would basically make sure every, all, everybody comes on board to, in order to be able to deliver, to deliver um, an organization that has the best customer service in Ghana. So our goal, we want our customers to truly believe in our tagline. And our tagline, tagline in, as part of the logo is that your bank for life. So thank you. Samuel, I have a question. What was your favorite program and why of Service Quality Institutes? For me, I think it's the feelings. I mean, uh, you know, you can't do anything without feelings. I mean, you know, we come to work and then we, you know, the thing is like, okay, I'm here to make money, so I do what I have to do. But you have to have some passion. You have to have some passion behind whatever you do. And the way you communicate with a customer, basically, really, it, it, it's key. So for me, I think I'll, I'll go for feelings. Okay, and, yeah. great. Well, I would like to thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause.
Lanier, you want to come up here? I would like to uh, give you this plaque for being a worldwide customer service leader. Both of you guys have done just a remarkable job. Thank you so much for flying all the way from Ghana, an incredible country, to come to Minneapolis. Thank you. And now we want you to spend all your money at the Mall of America. <laughs> Leave some in Minnesota. Thank you. But if we had 30% interest rates, I would die. <laughs> Okay. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.